the moon journey where all you had were these images where you could see dots but not the kind of live broadcast images we're seeing right now. Well, you know, I think what ISRO has done is really built on the competence. Uh, it, it, it was very hard focused on development, uh, you know, uh, technology, which was building uh, launchers and then satellites that we could utilize. So whether it was telecommunication uh, or uh, remote sensing or even navigation and uh, military uh, satellites. We built the competence. Now we are going into the next big step that is there, which is exploration. We started that with Chandrayaan. We had uh, Mangalyaan. And now we are bringing back, I think, the lunar mission because the world is now interested. You, you, if you've seen, uh, till about uh, 70s and 60s, you had over 100 missions. Then suddenly everything petered off. And only in 2000... Why did the world lose interest well, in the moon? Essentially, a couple of things. One is because all these missions, they got back a lot of uh, lunar... Uh, uh, material and they were able to study it and find out what was there and then they wanted to go beyond and do other things that were there whether it was a space station and uh, endurance in terms of Mars. Moon has come back for two reasons. One, they, uh, we, uh, I mean particularly US which has started the Artemis pro project which by 2025 will have again uh, humans on the moon. And the idea is uh, to colonize, uh, to use moon, uh, to colonize moon in some senses, and use it as a staging ground for exploration of Mars and other things. Why because is it easier to? Let me ask Dr. Rajan this question: Why is it easier to explore Mars and other places in our galaxy from the moon than it is from the Earth? See, it is so simple. It is nearer. No, but you're also so far away. So your ability to move things, get things there, restricted by the fact that you're no, already no, no, so far from the Earth. No, no, we don't have to do it. There. It will be done there. Yeah. See, now you see the other newer technologies. Here we are doing it by traditional manufacturing. There will be 3D things there, 3D doing, and probably new propulsion systems. When they all come, from there it is much easier. And then Earth's gravity pulls you down. Atmosphere that is why the first this one you have got a Bahubali bottom. Some meters really it has to struggle through. Here, that, but not don't think that it will be happening. Then. 15, 20 years by that those assembly will be done. That is the reason they are going for the South Pole. Can't go automatic. Everything cannot be automatic. That, who will do the thing, then the water will be recycled, then there will be some, probably they may start with algae and some plants because you have to eat also. All the food cannot be transported. Already it is heavy. So, so all those things will be there. It will, there will be some small habitat that will come. And probably countries are going to co cooperate. You mentioned about Artemis. So there is a possibility people will cooperate. Some will do this, some will do that, etc. So that's all. So the from no, but why have three missions to... failed so far? The Israeli, Bereshit, Japan's Hakuto R, Russia's Luna 25, all three attempting a similar landing on the south pole of the moon, all failed. Why? See, each one of them had different reasons. Japanese, some other. Israelis, some other. But they were all coming very close, like our Chandra and two, very close to the soft landing. Russians, of course, are very great. But their failure was even before what the current orbit is. Please remember, it is now it is 25 kilometers by 135 or something like that. Earlier, you were talking about 100. Like the Russians also were in their high, higher one. And then they were going a break and then coming to do this. At that point, they got into trouble. So that is a different type of problem. That landing has always been soft landing has been a problem. Because atmosphere is not there, so it has to do purely of its own weight and the thrusters. Uh, but people have understood much more. See, just as two, three, if you see the earlier space, today I was just doing in the Zoom. I knew it before. No, not Zoom. I'm doing in the, in the Google. Earlier failures, if you see from NASA and the USSR, so many. In fact, when we start doing our relatively failures are low because the corpus of knowledge which is available in the world wide, there is some amount of sharing. Nobody can keep everything under. People read, people learn. Uh, many of our fellows, 
will know a lot of things. So we learn. It is a continuous process of learning and doing it. And to me, it appears from all what is there and what all uh, Somnath, the chairman, has explained, the amount of precautions and everything they have taken, not only the fix the earlier problems, but also introduce so many other things. About 80% changes have been done into it. So with all that, I see a very, very, very high probability that it will land well. Okay, we've got our fingers crossed. This has been a master class in science. Dr. Rajan, I appreciate you taking our time and I hope to see you tomorrow after a successful landing. I want to welcome now Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, a space scientist formerly with the Mars Exploration Rover mission of NASA. We've got Dr. P.K. Ghosh, space strategist and researcher. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, the biggest question in this moment is whether ISRO will push for the landing tomorrow or will they activate plan B which is to push the landing till uh, Sunday. Could you explain as best as you can the factors that will be at play in the way that you would have done it at the Mars Exploration Rover for NASA. What would be kept in mind whether determining whether to go for that landing or to delay it and hedge till Sunday. Well, um, so. Um, you have to see what the trajectory is at that point. And based on that, you decide whether it's that optimal time to launch or not. Right. So anyone who's predicting either way, not landing, landing, probably does not know. It will depend on what they assess to us from now. So all predictions of what's, I mean, I think even ISTRO is trying to keep the options open. That's why they have come up with that other, other thing. So there are many parameters they will look at. And if something appears off then of course they will try a different time so and i was listening to the previous discussion um, uh, about um, uh, there is a lot of speculation one is the moon is does is not going to be the landing stage to reach out to the other planets there is no advantage the only advantage is to do technology demonstrations so that you can um, test these technologies before you head out further so, um, th that's what it is. Okay. How do you think the program has gone so far? From what we are hearing from ISRO is that uh, so far things have been as per schedule in the way that they would have estimated. Is this a project that, say, NASA, the Chinese, the Russians, they've all got their eyes out or it's not such a big deal for them? Well, it is. Uh, it's a curiosity. I wouldn't say that... Uh, um, See, there are many missions going on. As you mentioned, there, there were Japanese missions and Israeli missions. And so there, there are a lot of activity going on. So I wouldn't say everyone is, um, um, everyone is rooting for the success. That's for sure. Um, how, um, if, if you look at um, how NASA missions have gone so up to this stage. So I, I was actually not just part of the Mars Exploration Rover. It's also Curiosity, Mars Pathfinder, um, Mars Phoenix. All these missions, um, at this stage, everything looks good. It's the last stage, the landing stage, which is most difficult. So just because up to this stage, everything is fine, doesn't mean... Why, that why the is the landing the most difficult stage, sir? See, because the parameter space of the engineering parameter space is very large. So you have to have the light, right amount of deceleration, the right amount of atmospheric um, resistance. So all your parameters should match and you're guessing because you know you don't know all these spacecrafts have not been tested on the under lunar conditions they've been tested in the earth conditions so um see mars when you're going through the atmosphere you don't know the atmospheric stratification the density the pressure the temperature you're discovering it kind of the first time and so you have to adapt immediately your algorithm should be good enough and then there are slight things which can happen. Like, what if it did not land on the four legs? What's your what's your um, what's your um, remedy? What if the legs broke? What if there was a rock uh, there and it it kind of so so there are many possibilities. So and, what happens you know, in those I, cases? I, I, Let's take it one by one. What if it doesn't land on all four feet? Lands only on two. Uh, what if one of the legs breaks? What happens in these cases? Well. I think you have to ask somebody from ISRO, but I can tell okay. you from NASA missions, a lot of, we did, there is, for example, if the rover overturns, right? Um, this was a possibility for Mars Pathfinder. It was a very small rover like this. Um, there is really no recourse. So, so 
so you know if uh, so so you know we had a ramp um, so the lander had a ramp and the rover gently came down that ramp on the surface what if it did not come down gently and it toppled well that's the end of the mission it cannot drive again right oh, and uh, and then you know the ramp if you remember the ramp so the astro will also have a ramp the ramp from pathfinder in 97 got stuck in airbags so we could not unroll the ramp right so if you cannot unroll the ramp you cannot get the rover off the lander so again that's that's again a so what did you do then failure. if it got so, stuck in airbags what did you do so we played that same situation out on the ground here in our in our test lab and we tried many many combinations and then we somehow found a strategy how to, to entangle it so it was very very tense you know this is what you will not see <laughs> but there are a lot of things which go, go down the side just and making it sound <laughs> much more scary than one would have imagined right.